Hey y'all, welcome back to Mama Loves Manga. It has been a while, I know, <laughs> but in all honesty, this time away from making videos has been amazing because I've been able to read so much more. So this is something that you're probably gonna have to get used to. I don't think I'm gonna have a schedule anymore. I will come on here when I have finished reading something and I guess that's what I'll talk about first is some changes. Wow, that train though. <laughs> some changes that I will be making with my reading habits. In the beginning of my manga collecting journey, I was broke. <laughs> And also there weren't a lot of titles to choose from so I was forced to stick with one series at a time but I want to say like five years ago things changed we stopped being broke and also there's just so many titles available you go into bookstores now and the manga section is huge depending on the bookstore but there's a much bigger selection you can also buy manga online it's, it's a lot. It is pretty easy to get caught up in wanting to read all the things and see what's new and see what everyone else is reading, but I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to do that anymore. Well, I'm still going to see what other people are reading and I'm still going to put things on my TBR, but I decided that I'm going to go back to my original way of collecting manga and that is series by series, which is why it's taken me so long to make another video because I have been reading Oku the Inner Chambers by Fumi Yoshinaga and it's it's so good. As of right now, I am completely caught up. There are currently 13 volumes available. This series is so good that it's making me want to buy a set of the physical copies as well. So let's get into this series. Let's talk about Oku and my feelings and what it's about and all that jazz. I actually didn't hear about this series until I saw Laura from Manga Hoarder talking about it. She mentioned it in her video talking about I think her top favorite Jose titles or something like that. When she mentioned it, I was intrigued, so I put it on my list to read, and I ended up buying the first volume on my Kindle because I wasn't sure if I was going to like it and I didn't want to be stuck with the physical copy. Wow, that bird is also loud. The art style in Oku, how do I describe it? I'm not even going to describe it. I'm just going to post photos on the screen so that you can look at it. I love it. The amount of detail put into the art is, it's awe-inspiring, honestly, because I, I wish I could be that talented and amazing because it's just, it's amazing. So the art style gets a five out of five stars for me. It's absolutely beautiful. Oku, the inner chambers is set in what I believe is the Edo period in Japan. It's during the time when there were shoguns and samurai. The thing that makes this series even more interesting is that it is a reimagined history in which women were in power. And throughout the series, you get more backstory into why things are that way or how things got that way. And it's, it's a very interesting story. This story is full of political intrigue, murder. There's some trigger warnings for things like rape and incest, both forced and also kind of consensual. There's a character in there that um, I'm pretty sure he and his sister were in love with each other and it took me a minute to figure that out and then I was like, oh, and I was a little bit, a lot, I was a lot a bit like, mm. you know, I try to read it without judgment. There are some things that happen that actually had me in my feelings and I'm, okay, I, I was going to say that I'm not sensitive. I am so sensitive, but I can read a lot of different things, but there were some things that, oh, mm. anyway, as far as the story, I give that story five out of five stars. I have 
very much enjoyed reading the story. I, I think it's very well researched. I am very impressed. Five out of five for this story. So, so far we have the art, five out of five. Story, five out of five. Y'all are probably like, girl, does it really deserve five out of five stars for these things? Yes, yes it does, based on my own opinion. So you might pick it up and not like it, and you may, re you may read the story and not like it, although I don't understand. I don't understand. Don't understand. Every character that is introduced plays a part. And you may not realize it at first, but then something happens and you're just like, oh, well, all right. Also, there's a lot of death. Obviously, it is historical fiction, which means all of the characters, of course, are dead because we are currently in the present. <laughs> wow. But the way some of these characters die is... It hurts. It hurts my heart because I fully expected certain characters to just die from old age because they were such good, sweet, sweet cinnamon rolls. They were good people and they deserved to live out their lives. <laughs> but that's not what happened. And then there are others who are trash, complete trash, and they get to live out their lives and then die of natural causes and I don't understand it. I don't understand. Don't understand. I don't understand. Don't understand. I believe there are two volumes left. I looked on Wikipedia and it said there are 15 volumes total. I don't know if there are more. I don't know if there's going to be more after that. Volume 14 doesn't come out until either September or October. I'm hoping that 15 is the last one because honestly I've spent <laughs> I've spent a lot of money. <laughs> but for some reason I have this feeling that it's going to be like 20 plus volumes because I don't know how they're going to be able to end this series in just two more volumes. Especially considering that the volumes aren't extremely long. So I don't know what's going to happen with that and my bank account. Anyway, that's all I have for today. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye. <laughs>